Okay. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering it critical care scenario, kindly tell me, how would you manage this patient now? Yes, ma'am, and the patient is suffering from severe hypothermia. So uh, we will start with the, uh, and the CRISP protocol, starting with the AVC and D. And uh, first of all, we will see the uh, vitals of the patient and check for uh, the airway, breathing and circulation. And if this patient is in cardiac arrest or having a history, then we have to straight away go for CPR. If the patient has uh, uh, vitals and uh, he is uh, otherwise uh, uh, in hypothermic, then we need to start with the patient's rewarming protocol that involves uh, external rewarming as well as uh, if needed, then internal rewarming with uh, using uh, peritoneal lavage or media external lavage or Bladder lavage, these techniques can be used for rewarding. And can uh, you just look at the information given about this patient, like core body temperature, okay, 26, but then pH yes. is acidotic? Yes, yes, yes patient has uh, uh, severe acidosis, uh, metabolic acidosis. And this is also again due to hypothermia. Okay, but if uh, we are going to give patient 100% oxygen with non rebreathing mask and uh, we are going to establish IV cannulation and take labs as well. Apart from the pH and lactic acid, we are going to need a full blood count, uh, white cells, kidney function tests, LFTs, and PT INR as a marker of All right. Uh, Can you please profile. tell me uh, when would you classify uh, as a human body temperature to be hypothermic? Uh, uh, there are uh, three grades. That is the uh, uh, mild, that is when it's less than 35. If it's less than 32, it's uh, uh, moderate. And if it's less than 20 years, then it's severe hypothermia. But there's a oh. different classification for trauma patient as well. Okay. Can you please tell me how a core body temperature can be measured? A core body temperature is measured with uh, esophageal, rectal, or bladder temperature. Oral temperature or axillary temperature are not as adequate indicators of core body temperature. Did you mention tamponic membrane? Yes, even tympanic membrane it will be influenced by ambient air. It is not core body temperature. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, okay. Remind me to talk about this at the end. Okay. Can yes. you tell me what are the causes of hypothermia? In which circumstances one can have hypothermia? And yes. Uh, uh, acute hypothermia can occur in emergent, like in this patient, Oops. or in okay. case of an avalanche, or uh, chronic hypothermia if patient is exposed for a longer period of time, like the uh, uh, lying in cold and old old age patient. All right. Causes can induce alcohol or toxicity. Okay. If you don't get to manage this patient adequately, what are the complications that you expect? Uh, the most severe complication will be cardiac arrhythmia, first ventricular fibrillation followed by systole. Other include uh, confusion and coma due to decreased cerebral blood flow. And patient uh, may also have uh, pulmonary hypertension, de decreased respiratory drive, also How would hypothermia kidney. affect the respiratory system? Can you uh, explain the mechanism, please? Yes, it will uh, depress the uh, central nervous system, causing the uh, reduced outflow from the uh, medullary respiratory centers, as well as it will cause uh, uh, VQ mismatch due to pulmonary Very hypertension good. because yes. of uh, vasoconstriction. Yes, this is what I wanted to hear. Okay, can you please tell me how uh, can you reduce the risk of hypothermia according to the NICE guidelines? 
yes, we will do three things. One is to correct the environment of the patient. Number two, to correct the IV fluids or the blood temperature that is given to the patient. And number three is correct the air that is patient breathing, that is humidify and warm air. And apart from that, we will minimize the exposure to a cold air during transfer or any procedure. And uh, the these are the general measures for any patient. Okay. Can you tell Apart me, yes, how would you go ahead and warm the patient? Yes, this is usually passive external warming if the patient is suffering from mild to moderate uh, hypothermia. Not, not uh, if this particular patient, please. Yes, uh, passive uh, external warming is used for mild hypothermia, not in this patient. This is severe hypothermia. So this will yes. definitely require the aggressive measures like extracorporal membrane oxygenation or Very cardiopulmonary yes. bypass. Yes. yes, but uh, passive measures involve a uh, hot environment like uh, 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 warming the air or offering a blanket or giving warm drinks. Then um, active warming will involve uh, uh, forced warm drinks warm or uh, warm medication of IV fluids yes. because this patient cannot is not in the condition of drinking right now. Okay, yes. can you tell me if this patient has to be operated upon, what yes. are the measures that you will take to reduce or to keep the patient warm or to reduce further deterioration of the temperature? Yes, so we will uh, uh, keep the uh, uh, operative temperature, uh, the operative environment optimal. We will oh. uh, uh, warm the, this is usually the, op, uh, the OT temperature is 21. And if yes. needed, then radiant, radiant or convection heaters can be used to warm the temperature. And uh, any any body fluid that is transferred, that either IV fluid or for the peritoneal, peritoneal lavage, that should also be warmed to the uh, uh, room temperature. Okay. Apart from okay. that, yes. Completely. Apart from that, the uh, uh, operative uh, 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 time should be kept to a minimum. And uh, if needed, patient can be rewarmed with the use of uh, peritoneal lavage or uh, mediastinal lavage if need arises. Okay, and what measures would you do to keep the patient warm post-operatively? Um, in, 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 in recovery, the patient can be uh, warmed with the use of a beer hugger, that is uh, a forced warm air uh, heater. And uh, uh, patient should be covered. Uh, in this kind of patient, con what should be the ideal, ideal mm. uh, fluid and how would you calculate the requirement of fluid to be given to the patient? Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I, I'm not sure about the answer. I will come to it later. Okay. Can you tell me, okay, uh, right. Can you tell me how the body heat is maintained? Yes, there are four methods of uh, transmission of body heat. Yes. That is convection, evaporation, conduction, and uh, uh, convection. Convection, okay. conduction, evaporation, and radiation. And usual method of uh, uh, the uh, uh, maintaining body heat is uh, through vasoconstriction that provide dissip uh, avoid dissipation of heat and shivering that generates heat through uh, active muscle contractions. Okay. How would uh, how would you classify this mechanism? This is behavioral mechanism. That is mechanism of hemostasis. Yes, homeostasis for the heat preservation. Okay, what else happens in the process or mechanism of hemostasis? Um, these are the three things that the patient, if the patient feels cold, he will uh, behave like uh, he's feeling cold, like uh, taking warm, warm fluids or uh, covering himself with blanket. Then shivering is another mechanism and the body responds with the uh, a vasoconstriction to uh, prevent any heat loss. These are the mechanisms that body uses. If uh, there is uh, any uh, heat loss, uh, I do not understand specifically the question. That's why I'm yes, not able to uh, Other than uh, since in hemostasis, so there's blood vessel constriction. And if there is any injury or anything, blood platelet plug is formed, then blood coagulation takes place. So these are the sequelae of events which... Uh, Goes yes, ahead. hypo uh, um, uh, coagulopathy is one of the apart from acidosis, coagulopathy and hypothermia. These are the triad of uh, death, death in case of trauma patients. Okay, can you comment on the ABGs of this patient? 
Now, yes, this patient is having a metabolic acidosis, as we can see the base deficit is 10.5 and uh, yes. lactic acidosis is 6, which is normally should be less than 2 millimoles per liter. Right. So definitely, yeah. What should be the ideal way of uh, managing this ABT? Uh, uh, first thing is uh, rewarm the patient. Uh, second thing is give him fluids, IV fluids, uh, to improve the circulation. And uh, then the, uh, if need arises, then extracorporal uh, cardiopulmonary bypass can be used to correct the acidosis. And if the need arises, hemodialysis can also be used. Good. to keep the support to the patient okay how do normal people generate heat one answer. yes they generate heat the normal metabolism generates heat and uh, shivering will also help uh, by muscle yes. contraction yes yes good thank you thank you ma'am thank you uh, uh, here is your question <clears throat> 